Hey guys, earlier I did this video live during class and I thought I was doing well explaining everything, but someone told me they couldn't hear. There was something wrong with the audio, so I reconnected the mic and it should be working now. It's funny, it worked earlier in, in other classes today, but who knows, I should be uh, testing these things, I guess. So what I did in class today was not a new assignment. I was recapping everything you need to know for the project because... Uh, over the last few days, we've had parent conferences, and I've contacted some people who were just getting started or just getting connected with their groups. So if you are already on track with your group and you're working, you might not need to watch this. But if you're somebody who's just starting in the last few days, here we go. Link to the project page. This is where you'll probably do all your stuff in the beginning section. You hit the tutorial and it gives you a lot. I would skip this first video, by the way. All the other ones are great, but this one is a bit long. And you hit each step, and it tells you, here's a little code to copy. It also tells you why. It explains it, which is really nice. And you will learn a lot along the way. Okay, It's basically giving you uh, sort of sections and then filling them in as you go through each step. It'll ask, say, add this, copy this, here's this other part. And it's really nice. So, for example, this part is telling you that this is a single page app. It's not, uh, well, let me show you the template here. If you click this, it shows you an example of what you would get for this project. You get a welcome screen. And yours in the final version will have more than this, of course. It can have instructions or credits or images and so on. But you hit start, and then it gives you a question. And you have one choice out of four. You hit it, and if you're right, it'll say that. If you're wrong, it'll say that. And then it'll wait a few seconds and bring you to the next one. So I'm going to click on one that's wrong. And you see it highlights the one that was right. And then I'll click one that is right, which is this one. And it'll say that different color. It says a different message. And if I went through the end, it would have one more screen, which is the results. And it might say, good job, or better luck next time, or you got this many points, etc. So you're going to make something like this. Um, starting with the template, if you go through this tutorial, you'll copy the code to get you the welcome screen, the questions, and the final screen. And then I'll grade that. That'll be like your first assessment, which is just to get that basic tutorial set up and working. And then you're going to add your own stuff. Uh, change the questions, obviously. Change the welcome screen to add more features. Change the buttons. You might add a button that has uh, back or skip or hint or something like that. And you might add images or sound depending on what you need. But first, the basics. And it explains what these things do. It's basically the same as quarter one. If you were uh, doing your project in quarter one, we had a button that would make a thing appear or disappear or make the color change um, based on tiny uh, JavaScript functions. And this is the same thing, really, in this project. It's just a little bigger. And that's okay because it's already uh, started for you. You don't have to start from a blank uh, white document this time. It starts with oh, here are the screens, and then we fill in. And here is a little bit of the uh, background and sizing and stuff, and you can change it. And then as you go through these, it'll tell you, okay, copy a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and you will get not only what you need, but explanations of what you need. And if you have questions beyond that, you can ask me, and I'll tell you whatever uh, specifics you're interested in, of course. You go through this, and you'll have the basics. Then it has more. This is a great site. It's from IUPUI, and they have all kinds of stuff in there. But anyway, there's one thing that they don't quite explain well. There's one thing that I think they wish, I wish they would have had a tiny bit more, which is the answers, uh, the questions and answers. They're not stored in the HTML. They're not stored in the JavaScript. They're stored in a separate database, although database makes it sound fancy, it's just a spreadsheet, um, a Google Sheet. And if you take this one from the template, copy it, it'll already have the columns set up, and you can fill this in with your own categories and your own stuff. 
and then the JavaScript will read this, pick a question, randomize the choices, uh, use them to display uh, like we saw. Now, there is one step on that where you have to uh, publish, which is gray here because this is not mine, this is the template one. But uh, unfortunately, on a student account, we've seen that it doesn't quite work. You can publish to Grader Clark, but not the web, and so you have to send it to me first. Most of the groups already have done that, but if you get to that point and you need help, let me know, and I can. It just takes like 30 seconds. I can help you with that. So if you're just getting started, you need to know that, but you also need to know your group. So click this link, and it'll tell you uh, the group. Some chose each other, and some, if they were left at the end and they hadn't declared anything, I put them in a group, and then they need to contact each other. Like yesterday, these guys just. Uh, contacted each other and you can by using the IDs you can email people you can share docs with them or you can share your replit file with them which is uh, I recommend doing this on replit I don't know if it would work on code HS although some I'm sure somebody will try and we'll find out and then the group should have three roles you've got your um, waiting for it to load here your code lead this person does the HTML and JavaScript uh, obviously the tutorial first and then changing them to add features um, or to rearrange how it works. Uh, Quizlead will write the questions, make sure they're well-written English uh, grammar and punctuation and everything, make sure they make sense and they're correct and they uh, don't conflict with each other. And they all fit with a theme. Okay, so you, each group will have a theme. Your questions are not just like miscellaneous trivia but you should have a topic that holds it all together so one group can do uh, you know NBA players or another group can do video games or another group can do um, you know types of dogs or something whatever you like it should be something that people are going to know because you're going to share this with the class and you don't want to ask about like uh, a TV show that nobody's seen and then they would just end up guessing it should be something uh, relatively uh, well known. Okay. Now, of course, these rules overlap and people do different stuff. The last one I didn't say was the design lead. You're going to do CSS, which is fairly easy code, and also uh, the artistic side of things, making sure it looks good, it fits with the theme, it's accessible. So, for example, if you have a low contrast between the text and the background, uh, that's no good. You want to have like super light background and super dark text or the other way around, but not in the middle, not like a medium green background and a medium purple text. It would be uh, tough on the eyes. And you want it to be unique. You want it to look different from the other groups because we're going to share these at the end. You want to be able to say, here's ours. It's cool. It's different. It has a different look. It has a different feature and so on. So if you are looking at those, uh, by the way, the final thing is the dates. It shows that we're going to do um, a little bit differently than quarter one. Quarter one, we kind of wait until the last minute for everything, which is no good, uh, especially in this situation, because here's what we got. E-learning currently doing fine. Got two weeks. Real two weeks, full time, no interruptions, no nothing. Uh, you know, there's not a, like a testing day that interrupted everything. This is just time to work. And I would like to get it done before then. So before November 20th, then we have this extra time for extra stuff, makeup, retake, finishing grades, and relaxing. But if we wait until the very last minute to turn in our projects, first of all, it's going to be hard because People might be traveling, they might be taking holidays and uh, hard to contact, especially in a group project. But also if we turn it in, then there's no time for grades or makeups or retakes. So that's really bad, especially for the semester grade, which counts in a bigger way than the quarter grade. So what I'm saying is uh, two and a half weeks from now, that's what we're going to use for work. After that, hopefully just a few extra bits. I don't want this video to be super long, so I'm going to stop now, but please, uh, let's get going. Most of the groups already are, but if you're somebody who's just been starting in the last few days, use this. It has everything, and tell me how I can help.
Thanks.